Some of the most amazing pictures ever recorded by humans are the ones captured from space and other celestial bodies. These show us a different perspective of the world that was never seen by humans until the mid 20th century. These photos almost always have an interesting bit of history attached to them, especially as we look back to early spaceflight. Hello to everyone tuning in and welcome to my very first video. My name is Zach and through this channel I want to share my excitement on space, science and technology. Uh, today we're actually going to be looking at some of the most interesting photographs taken from space. I'll put them in chronological order for you and give you a bit of the story surrounding each. So let's get right into it. Starting at the very beginning, we have the very first picture taken from space. Now the story behind this picture is actually pretty interesting. It was taken on October 24th, 1946, a month and a half after the end of the Second World War. At the time though, this was such an important picture because never before have we gotten a camera up high enough to really see the curvature of the Earth. Although we have sent cameras up before this point using weather balloons, we have never actually crossed what is now considered the Kármán line, which denotes the altitude you need to be at to actually be in space. Now the photo itself was actually captured by a 35 millimeter camera aboard a German V2 missile, but it actually wasn't the Germans that took the photo. And that's because after the war ended, the good old US of A commandeered a supply of V2 missiles for testing at White Sands Missile Range. Basically, we took the rockets and we launched them straight up into the air and we just let them fall straight back down. They achieved apogees in excess of 100 miles above sea level, taking photos along the way. To retrieve the film though, we actually placed it in a steel canister that would be able to survive the crash into the ground at 548 kilometers per hour. The steel canister was able to keep the film safe so it could be recovered by the scientists, who by the way, we also commandeered from Germany after the war. The second entry on our list is the first photo taken by a human in space. I would say astronaut, but in this case, it was actually a Russian cosmonaut. More specifically, German Titov during the Vostok 2 mission conducted by the Soviet Union, August 6, 1961. Titov was aboard his Vostok 3KA spacecraft when he took the camera he brought along and snapped a picture of planet Earth, which was more detailed than a lot of the photos from space up until this point. The mission was noteworthy though for a few reasons, and it also broke some records. First of all, it was the first manned mission to actually complete more than one orbit of Earth. It went on to do 17 and a half orbits before re-entry. The total mission duration was over 24 hours. And this is noteworthy because at the time, the space doctors believed it was important for human safety to keep the mission at or under three orbits. But early cosmonauts were basically space cowboys, unlike Jeff Bezos, and they decided to extend the mission to an entire day in space for better or worse. At first, it was worse. He broke another record though during the space flight, which was the first human to blow chunks while in space. But after a bit of time, he managed to sleep it off and recovered and felt totally fine, just like any Russian after a long night of drinking. He went on to successfully complete the mission, but there is a bit of a caveat. During re-entry, there were quite a few issues and it might have ended up being deadly, but luck was most definitely on his side. And in the end, he managed to return to Earth safely. The third entry on our list is the first known selfie taken while on EVA. And for those who aren't space nerds like myself, this means outside of the spaceship, floating in space with your spacesuit on. Space, space, space. Now, this first selfie was taken by none other than Buzz Aldrin, and since, space selfies have actually become kind of a tradition. This picture was taken during the Gemini 12 mission on November 12th, 1966. And personally, I find the photos of astronauts free-floating outside of their space vehicle some of the most amazing pictures ever taken. This flight was the final crewed flight in the Gemini program and one of the main objectives was to demonstrate that humans could actually perform work while on EVA. As the previous missions in the program really weren't able to fully demonstrate this, there was quite a few issues that we're not gonna get into right now. 
but a vintage print of this photo was actually sold for $9,200 in 2015. Personally, I would never pay $9,200 for a picture I could print off the internet. Ironically, that probably doesn't even cover the cost of the selfie stick that Aldrin used to take the picture. For the fourth entry, we have one of the most famous pictures to ever come from spaceflight. This picture is called Earthrise, and it was taken during the Apollo 8 mission from lunar orbit on Christmas Eve of 1986. I wish my parents got me a trip to the moon for Christmas, but it never happened. Anyway, the crew of the mission were able to host a live broadcast from lunar orbit, showing the public amazing views of the Earth from over 300,000 kilometers away. And at the time, it was the most watched TV broadcast ever. One interesting note about this flight, it was the first manned flight out of Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where manned spaceflight continues to today. Recently, the United States launched astronauts from home soil for the first time in years aboard the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor, launching from the same exact pad as the Apollo 8 mission that captured this photo. The trip to the moon took the crew almost three days, after which they spent around 20 hours orbiting the moon. After traveling a distance of 377,000 kilometers away from Earth and back, the capsule splashed down in the Pacific Ocean December 27, 1968. This mission paved the way for Apollo 11, which is the one flight that everyone has heard of, that landed the first man on the moon in July of the next year. Speaking of Apollo 11, this next photo is from the Apollo 11 moon landing, specifically of Buzz Aldrin standing before the U.S. flag that was planted during the mission. The landing occurred on July 24, 1969, with two astronauts famously taking the journey down to the surface, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. On the surface, the astronauts used a 70mm camera to capture some of the most famous, probably the most famous, photographs to this day. While Aldrin and Armstrong were having the powwow of a lifetime on the surface, astronaut Michael Collins went down in history as the biggest third wheel of all time as he sat alone in the command and service module in lunar orbit. The mission captured the awe and interest of the general public in a way that hasn't really been repeated since. As a matter of fact, one million watched the launch in person live, including many VIPs, government officials, including the vice president, former president and former president's wife. In addition, an estimated 25 million people watch the television broadcast in the United States alone. But hopefully, when NASA returns to the lunar surface in the mid-2020s, we will start to see greater public support for space exploration. That is, if Jeff Bezos ever stops suing NASA and SpaceX for him not getting the lunar contract. But I'll probably release a video on this in the near future. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. Before moving on, I also have to mention I'm disappointed it's taken over 50 years for humanity to start leaving low Earth orbit. Though I understand the reason behind the focus on LEO, we quickly lost the ambition we showed during the Apollo days. Hopefully, the new wave of commercialization, commercialization will be what pushes us further into the solar system. Next, we have the first untethered spacewalk, meaning the astronaut had to rely on basically a space jet pack to prevent him from floating away. The mission was called STS-41B, and the picture was taken on February 7, 1984. It shows NASA astronaut Bruce McCandless floating in space outside of the shuttle Challenger, wearing the Man Maneuvering Unit, or MMU for short, with Earth in the background. NASA astronaut Bob Stewart also performed EVA tests with the MMU during this mission, and both astronauts traveled a distance of over 91 meters, or 300 feet, from Challenger. I imagine it's kind of a strange feeling to be floating in the void of space 300 feet away from the only thing that can actually get you home, but the risk really wasn't as great as it might appear because the shuttle is able to pretty easily maneuver in space and chase down any runaway astronauts. McCandless was quoted as saying, it may have been a small step for Neil, but it's a heck of a big leap for me, which really shows how intimidating this spacewalk was for the astronauts. He was also heavily involved in the development of the MMU, which seems to have given him the confidence to be the first one to test it. 
This mission launched from Kennedy Space Center Pad 39A on February 3, 1984, and landing around eight days later on February 11th. Ironically, McCandless sued the English singer Ditto over the use of this photo from this mission because she used the photo as the cover art for her 2008 album titled Safe Trip Home. The case was settled on January 14, 2011, and the details of the settlement were not disclosed. Because he wasn't the owner of the copyright of the image, he sued for the use of his persona to help sell the album. The seventh image I have is dubbed the Hubble Deep Field and was taken by the famous Space Base Telescope over a period of 10 days in the year 1995 between December 18th and 28th. This photo is an accumulation of 342 separate exposures taken while looking into the universe at the constellation Ursa Major. This photo is actually showing just 0.0000004% of the night sky or 1 over 24 million. Almost every light you're seeing in this image is an entire galaxy, showing just how big the universe really is. Scientists chose this portion of the sky to observe because of the lack of bright objects, otherwise the light would have drowned out any distant galaxies which were so far away. The light we captured was actually 4 billion times dimmer than what the human eye could see. To build images like the one you're seeing, scientists have to take huge amounts of raw data captured by the sensors aboard Hubble and run them through algorithms that actually can compose a normal color image. Most space telescopes like the Hubble capture light within a specific wavelength and Hubble allows the use of filters to choose the wavelength range to capture. For this observation specifically, they use four broadband filters, one for capturing near ultraviolet, one for capturing blue, another for capturing red, and the fourth for capturing near infrared. Each filter captured light for over 30 hours each, and then the data was combined to create a color image. The Hubble Space Telescope is actually one of the most important scientific instruments ever created and has given us some of the most amazing pictures of the universe. After the success of this image, Hubble has been used for many more deep field observations, giving us images of galaxies billions of years in the past. We are going to cover one more image taken by the Hubble, and this one is dubbed the Pillars of Creation. Taken the same year as a previous entry, 1995, this photo captured interstellar gas and dust in the Eagle Nebula around 7,000 light years away from Earth. The name comes from the fact that the gas and dust in this photo is creating brand new stars. Astronomers Jeff Hester and Paul Schoen from ASU were the ones responsible for the original image of this structure. The area has been photographed since by ESA in 2011 and again by Hubble in 2014. The image was important because of the impact it had on the public once released. Now, for some additional info on Hubble itself, it was originally launched in 1990 and it is still operational to this day. But it's had its share of issues along the way. Most recently though, in 2021, there were computer issues that took the telescope offline for a short time. Although we no longer have the shuttle to service the space telescope, Ideas have been floated around to use newer vehicles like the Sierra Nevada Dream Chaser, SpaceX Crew Dragon, and NASA's Orion. In my opinion, we're long overdue for another large space-based telescope, and hopefully the James Webb Space Telescope will launch by the end of 2021. Although it's not a full replacement, it is a step in the right direction. It's been plagued with technical issues that have been causing delays and an ever-increasing multi-billion dollar budget, mainly due to the complex multi-element unfolding mirror. There are newer rockets being developed, like SpaceX Starship, that would be able to launch a mirror this size or even larger and without the need for the complex folding mechanisms, making telescopes like this much simpler, cheaper, and hopefully quicker to build, which should push space-based astronomy even further ahead in the near future. Now, for number nine, I wanna cover some more recent images taken from space. So, we have a picture from the SpaceX-developed Crew Dragon spacecraft docking with the International Space Station 
with Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley on board being the first humans to fly the Crew Dragon. This mission was important for a number of reasons, including the fact that it was the first human spaceflight to launch from the United States since the last space shuttle mission, STS-135, in 2011, and the first launch of humans by a commercial provider. Bob and Doug took off from Kennedy Space Center, LC-39A, on May 30th, 2020, riding atop a Falcon 9 rocket. The docking to the space station occurred the next day. I actually watched this live on television during quarantine, and it was one of the most amazing things I've watched live. The Space Dad duo returned to Earth on August 2nd, marking the end of a successful test flight, followed by a two-month stay aboard the ISS. This meant that SpaceX won the capture the flag race between itself and Boeing. Yeah, Boeing. Who were both awarded the contract to ferry astronauts to the ISS. Boeing spacecraft still hasn't reached the ISS as of August 2021. Actually, as of today, it's September 2021. And it looks like it's going to be probably next year before they're able to do an uncrewed test. And that uncrewed test is required before they're actually able to do a crewed flight. Boeing's program, which is dubbed Starliner, has been plagued by issues including, but not limited to, a leak of toxic carcinogenic hyperbolic propellants in 2018, a parachute failing in 2019, a host of software issues also in 2019 preventing the spacecraft from reaching the ISS, and issues with the propulsion system in August of this year preventing the second attempt at an uncrewed test flight from launching. This is another topic I might cover in a separate video. Let me know what you think down in the comments. But I don't want to rag on Boeing too hard in this video. I need to save some of it for Jeff Bezos later on. But I hope they change their approach towards spaceflight to become more competitive in the modern market. For the 10th and final photo on our list, we have some amazing high definition pictures taken from the surface of Mars by the Perseverance rover. These are some of the most detailed images we have of the Martian surface and really captured the attention of the public when Percy landed on Mars February 8, 2021. The mission also carried a helicopter named Ingenuity with it to the surface, going on to have multiple successful test flights in an atmosphere that's less than 1% of the pressure here on Earth. Both the rover and helicopter have been sending back a host of high quality images of the red planet, showing the rocky desert-like surface in stunning quality. Some of the objectives of this mission include preparing for human exploration by testing the feasibility of oxygen production, looking for signs of microbial life and environments that would have been capable of supporting life, and collecting rock and soil samples. One interesting note is NASA eventually wants to send a mission to return these samples back to Earth so scientists can physically examine them. The rover lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Slick 41, aboard a ULA Atlas V on July 30, 2020. This mission serves as a precursor to human exploration of the Red Planet. After returning to the Moon within the next four to five years, hopefully, if Jeff Stop suing NASA, please. Sites will be set on landing a human on the surface of Mars. SpaceX are already testing Starship, which is their rocket and spacecraft designed to take humans and cargoes to Mars and allow humans to permanently colonize another planet for the first time in history. Now just imagine being one of the first humans to step foot onto another planet, exploring and building the beginnings of a new colony. Hopefully, we as a species can come together to realize our next step in evolution, which is to colonize other worlds and expand out into the solar system. And that's all we have for today. That's just some of the most amazing pictures. There are quite a few more that I really would have liked to include, but honestly, I just didn't want to make the early videos too long. Let me know what your favorite pictures from the list are and if there are any that you would have liked to see on it. And of course, I have to say, if you enjoyed the video, it really would make my day if you would leave a like. Even just one like will make my day. If you want to see more content from me, please subscribe. I plan on releasing at least a couple of videos every week. I'll try to respond to every comment I get as long as I don't get a huge number, which I'm sure I won't. I'll be able to respond to you. Anyone who made it this far into the video, thank you for sticking through to the end. 
I'll see you soon. Peace.